Shane Boz is being promoted by the Rays on Monday. Plus, we have waiver wire hitters to rank next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT and 5. As always, make sure to follow and stream us on Spotify. Today is Monday, September 20th. I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White, Shane Boz. We've been talking about him for a while. One of the top pitching prospects for the Tampa Bay Rays. Having an awesome season in the minors. 206 ERA, .80 whip, 26% rostered. The problem is that his only two starts might be against the Blue Jays and the Astros the rest of the way. Scott, would you be looking to add Shane Boz anywhere? Well, I mean, that's not the only problem. He's being called up by the Rays if, yeah. of all teams. And you know how they handle pitchers. They don't handle them in the most conventional way. Are they going to let him go five-plus innings right out of the gate? Is he going to take it to the majors that quickly? There's a pretty good chance. I You could make the case he's the best pitching prospect in baseball right now. But I, I just don't know what to expect from the Rays. And, and that's really the problem is you're, you're throwing them in there blindly. And yes, the first matchup is against the Blue Jays. Provided they go with a six-man rotation for this first week, and I haven't seen that Boz is replacing anybody. Again, we're dealing with the Rays, so they don't give us much insight here. Uh, but presuming they go six-man rotation this week, then it would be the Astros for one start next week. So neither of the matchups are good. And I just don't think it's worth pursuing at this point. I wish he'd gotten called up a month ago. Yeah, he's a very exciting prospect, but obviously this is crunch time in fantasy baseball, and I don't know if you want to be relying on a prospect to get it done at this point. Let's rank some waiver wire hitters by position, and we'll start with shortstop. Brendan Rodgers, your boy, Scotty. He had Mm -hmm. six hits with two home runs this weekend, has six home games this week in Coors Field. Isaiah Kiner-Falefa, three straight multi-hit games, including two steals on Sunday. Nicky Lopez is having a massive September, 342 batting average, one homer, two steals. He's 52% rostered. And then Gavin Lux, former top prospect for the Dodgers, went three for four with a home run on Sunday. He has started eight of their last nine games. How would you rank that group? Well, got to go Rogers number one with the way he's he heated up over the weekend, and now he gets three of his last four series at Coors Field. Hasn't many hit, hit many home runs there yet, but it's obviously a very favorable venue. So I would put him number one here. Nicky Lopez would be number two, though obviously not getting any power from him, batting average and speed. Gavin Lux would be number three. He has a series at Coors Field this week as well. And then kind of for left as a distant fourth. fourth. He did get two stolen bases on Sunday, but that equals the total he had from like the middle of June until Sunday. So he really hadn't been doing much of that recently. All right, let's move over to the outfield. Jared Kelnick, we've been waiting for something, anything. And it looks like the last four games are pretty good. Seven hits, three homers, one steal during that stretch. He's only struck out three times during those four games. He's 63% rostered, has seven road games this upcoming week. Eddie Rosario hit for the cycle. On Sunday, he has started five of the last six games for the Atlanta Braves. Andrew Benintendi is having a pretty big September, 389 batting average, three homers, five doubles. He's 62% rostered. And then Ian Happ is also having a big September. He hit a home run off of Corbin Burns on Saturday and is 61% rostered. Kelnick, Rosario, Benintendi, Happ. How would you rank him? I would go Happ number one, followed by Benintendi. Kelnick third like what we've seen from him here recently. Uh, But he still has some plate discipline issues going on. And then Eddie Rosario, fourth. Though, you know, I don't don't think any of them are bad choices, especially since Rosario seems to have overtaken Jock Peterson in the Braves' outfield pecking order. All right, last but not least, we have first base. If we're talking first base, you know we're talking about my boy. Frankie, two hits. Frank Schwindel, his last nine games, he has 16 hits, three home runs. He's 62% rostered. Brandon Belt, has six road games this week. Three of those are in Coors Field. He hit his 26th home run of the season on Friday. Jamer Candelario, over his last seven games, he has seven hits, including four home runs. He's 63% rostered. And then Bobby Dahlbeck has three home runs over his last eight games, and he's 51% rostered. The problem is the Red Sox only play five games this upcoming week. Yep. So Schwindel, Belt, Candelario, and Dahlbeck. Everybody needs to pick up Frank Schwindel. I don't care if you need first base help or not. Frankie two hits, as you've dubbed him. 
turned out to be a very fitting name. Four of his last five games, exactly two hits. Batting average just keeps rising and rising. Uh, Brandon Bell would be number two, especially with that series of cores this week. Candelario third and Bobby Dahlbeck fourth. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, your smart speakers, or anywhere else podcasts are found. And thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. If you enjoyed the pod, please leave a five-star review on Apple. We'll be back again on Wednesday morning. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.